What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com. Today we're going to be looking at how to make a Drake back-to-back -back style beat with stock plugins and VSTs. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and today we're going to be looking at how to do this. Alright, first I want to say what's up to some new subscribers. We got Stanton, Dylan Brownie, Saint7 YouTube, Charles Blackhouse, Kings James RWE, Jay Stutter, Everton Grosset, Michael Brown, Chris Lopez, Trifling Tracks, Batman GFYS, Camille Music, Sterling Reynolds, and Bilderberg Group. Now, Bilderberg, you're going to have to uh, unsubscribe because I don't need the Illuminati rumors. You know, I never thought that I'd get to this level where I'd have the Bilderberg group following me. Now nah, I'm tripping. I appreciate all you guys signing up, following the channel. Um, you know, hit me up. I'll give you guys feedback. I got a big announcement. We're going to be... Um, taking studio1tutorials.com to the next level we're going to be offering exclusive content and lessons uh going to start doing ebooks and um private um private um one-on-one -on -one sessions um it's going to be a subscription-based service um we'll be dropping one new exclusive tutorial every month i mean every week and um you know i'm just doing that so that um so that we can you know go ahead and have this incentive to keep on giving you guys the content back to back the uh the site the youtube portion is going to stay the same we're still going to have tutorials i'm still going to be engaging with everybody we're just going to go ahead and take the next step with the website so look out for that for a lot more in-depth information um <clears throat> moving on to this uh to this tutorial um the focus of this i've been getting a lot of questions about um stock plugins for mixing and you know making beats with stock plugins so i wanted to do something you know all stock sounds um the only thing that aren't stock sounds is um the drums on this one i use the south side the official south side kit which you can get on freedrumkits.com so everything here is something that you have or you can download for free now let's go ahead and start off with the melody um the first patch is a pad from um from my tie it's a it's a stock preset um it's called dark pad i didn't do uh really any 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 kind of uh, crazy tweaking on this one and when we go and we look at the uh at the original melody it's just a um a regular you know uh one two three four type of melody um one bar repeating over and over again now the reason why i chose back to back was because it's a perfect example of keep it simple don't be basic there aren't a lot of sounds in the beat it kind of looks it, to me when i was redoing it it kind of seemed like um you know they were just uh putting something together real quick you know um you know just give me something i could put a hard rap on and it came out to be you know a really big song um the the actual musicality of it is pretty simple but it's also it's also a technique that you might not um, use a lot, but it's good to know. If you listen to the melody, it's moving, but because you use these same two bottom notes here and these same two bottom notes here, the movement isn't, um, it isn't as pronounced. So, for example, if we listen to it without these bottom notes, if you just listen to this melody like this you hear there's a it sounds like there's a lot more movement between the notes then when you add um when you add these bass notes underneath it 
You almost get like an open chordal type of um, tone to it. Um, the first thing that you want to notice when you're making something that sounds like creepy and tense like this, again, um, I've mentioned this in other videos, is you see the actual main melody, they're moving from note to note um, in a half step. And that's always going to give you something, you know, dreary and depressing and tight, um, tense. When you add the bass notes underneath it, that's what gives you your character. And it enables you to create something that is very simple but it has a lot it had it still has texture and character to it um so that's that's why they were able to get away with doing something um so simplistic but still sounding you know like great music um <clears throat> then what i did was to you know to get the sound that they had um we just uh stacked it with uh this preset called Tamita strings and I just back the filter back a little bit um you know to cut to cut the highs off give it that Drake type of feeling and so you go from this to this So you have that nice, um, you know, it's kind of like a, a throwback, like 80s type of vibe, 80s synth type of vibe. Um, the other sound that they had in there was um, this, this little bass synth. In order to create that sound, I just used the default and I changed it. Um, to a square wave and a sine wave, I adjusted the uh, the octave range a little bit, and then I I put it in mono and um, just kind of adjusted the glide to uh, you know to get that little slide effect. This had a delay on it originally. I took the delay off. Um, the next part that that we added was the snare. Um, and this was just a, you know, Southside Snare 23. Again, this was a, this was a free kit. Um, FreeDrumKits.net is a really good resource if you don't have a lot of uh, a lot of drum sounds. You can go and get, uh, you know, the 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 kits that say like official, you know, Lex Luger or Southside or DJ Mustard. Those are good kits to to mess with. They always have sound fonts and stuff inside of them too. So you get um, all these different sounds and effects. The Southside one is really one of the best ones out. Um, here's the snare that we added. Then we went ahead and that, that snare is just a regular snare pattern. The kick was, um, you know, you could go ahead and you could go ahead and screenshot that. The kick that I used was uh, the Southside single kick. This is a good kick for stacking on um, 808s because you can see it's a real short release kick. It doesn't have a whole bunch of information going out this way, so it doesn't um, clash with your 808s. Um, the next part of the drums that I did was the hi-hats. Um, one of the things that made me want to redo this track was the hi hats because they have they got something really cool going on with the hi hats if you listen to it especially if you have headphones check this out now if you you know if you got your headphones on or if you got some decent speakers you can see that they have um you know they pan it each hit that comes in they pan it left to right um these are uh 64 note rolls and then, um, and then over here, this is a this is a sixteenth triplet um, chop, and this is just um, all I did was I took I took a sixteenth note, you know, put it you know put it in, 
clicked it in like this. Then you go to 164, right click on it, split it grid, you know, and that's how I got these. The um the panning is the panning is what really makes it cool. You know, a lot of times, um, you know, when we're mixing, um, you can kind of take mixing for granted, but mixing is where you'll get a lot of your sound. Um, you know, and, and doing automation like this, especially on a simple track, what you're doing is you're giving um the ear something to listen for and something to ex expect. And when you do that, you um you're opening up um thinking patterns and expectations in someone's mind um psychologically so what that does is that creates interest and then all of a sudden it doesn't matter that you have a one bar melody repeating over and over again because you've you've done other things to create interest in the track um and that's something that you want to keep in mind when you're making any beat is you know how can i make this more interesting um the next point that we'll move on to is the 808 Sounds like this. That 808 is um, the gutter 808. This is uh that's not a stock preset. That's my preset. I actually made this actual 808 um, in a tutorial. Um, I'll put it in the I'll put it in the description things called 808s with my tire sound design with my tire something and um i remember i saved it and i, and I was looking through the presets and I, I brought it up and it wound up working perfectly all i did was adjust the glide you know because um for different songs different tempos you need different um different glide times and i just wanted to make sure i got that slide down in the middle So that's uh yeah that's pretty that's pretty basic stuff right there and that's really all there was to the track um you know you have your little you have your little dropouts where it's just the strings playing and then it comes back to the drums um this song the way that it was arranged you know the only changes that you have is you know there's no transition effects nothing crazy it's just a guy rapping um and cutting the drums in and out and if you have an artist who is you know good enough at rapping and they have and they have something to say you know you can you can pull tracks out like this and um you know make the stuff work so we'll go ahead and take a listen to it as a whole so you guys can get a uh, you know a better picture of what it sounds like <laughs> So that's you know that's the basic um, overall vibe of the track. Now, as far as as far as the mixing is concerned, um, you know, like I like I do all my songs. I have I have two buses, drums and band. The instruments are routed to the band. The um, the drums are routed to the drums, and then from there, I send it to the filter bus, and then from there I send it to the mix bus. Now. 
um, my sends. I have a uh, I have a room reverb, and um, you know when you're putting your reverb on a send, uh, they've added this nice folder called send effects, and it's already and it's already set up to be used as a send, so that's good. Um, these presets are all really good. Room reverb is um, it's a really good reverb plugin, totally usable. Um, you can you can it's very customizable. You can get whatever you want out of it. Um, and I just use a little bit of hall reverb on the, uh, you know, on these, um, on these strings. You know, it just, it just give a better tail, a little bit of ambiance. Um, I use pro EQ to just roll off some of the bottom end because it was clashing um with the 808 you know whenever you're doing an 808 driven track um you want to you want to try to roll off everything that's below 50 hertz you know once you get it once you get into 100 hertz you don't have to you don't have to take that much off but you can uh if the sound has a lot of um has a lot of content around 100 you'll definitely want to attenuate it um to you know to kind of control that so it's not bumping up against your 808. I added some chorus to this one. I just felt like, you know, the original, the string sounded really cheap and cheesy, but you know, like they did that on purpose. Um, so I wanted to keep up with that theme. So, you know, sometimes adding chorus, um, it, it's more of a vintage effect and, um, that can uh that can take you where you want to go as far as that's concerned the um this uh this little uh bass slide i use the red light district distortion you know and just turn the dry and wet down a little bit just to get it a little bit more growl here's it without it Use it with it. You know, just a you know, just a little bit of flavor on it. Um, the drums in in this kit, um, like a lot of drums in kits that you you know in the better kits you download, they don't need a lot of mixing. They've already been you know they've already been processed enough. They just need space in the mix. Um, so I didn't really, I didn't do any EQ or compression or anything crazy on those. Um, I just added um, the 808. That I felt like it needed some help um, in the presence department. See, when you listen to it like this, it, you know, it's, it's really good down low. It's really good in the subs, but it was getting lost in the mix. So, um, you know, if I had my, you know, if I was using, if I was using my plugins, I would, you know, get the isotope exciter and, um, you know, use the multiband distortion. Um, when you're using stock plugins, you can still, um, get those type of effects. You just got to, um, you just got to break it down to basics. So an exciter is pretty much just a, a distortion unit. So what I did was I, I went and loaded Ampire up on Ascend and I selected the bass amp and, um, you know, use the, uh, the bass cabinet and, you know, I cranked the drive a little bit and really cranked up the presence. That's, uh, you know, that's like the, uh, the mid to high, you know, range harmonics. And um, when I went ahead and did that and added it as a send, we wound up going from this to this. Yeah, I mean, you could tell instantly, especially if you got headphones or a sub like that, that, ta that tone makes all the difference in the world. Um, you know, and for the mastering, 
Um, I didn't really, you know, I tried to get lucky. I didn't really put a lot of uh, a lot of thought into it. I went to because I noticed I noticed they they do have, uh, you know, some pretty decent presets here. So I went down and, um, you know, for for a lot of for most of the hip hop music, um, it's really, you know, overly compressed and super loud. So I found this Smackdown preset and I just tweaked it a little bit. Um, you know, they had the low end hyped up. I just went ahead and 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 lowered that because um, I didn't need it for my mix. I, I mix around the kick in the 808. So um, that really wasn't necessary for what I was trying to do. Um, this little boost to, um, you know, to bring up the mids, um, that wound up adding something pretty nice. We'll go ahead and listen to that. Here's it without it. With it. See, you know, when I turn it on, it just has a nice air about it. Um, they use the uh, this preset uses the multiband compressor. Um, I usually don't use a multiband compressor. I'll use two regular compressors and serial, but um, this did a really good job of of really just kind of evening out the transients and not squeezing anything too much. I didn't really uh, change anything because I got lucky and it didn't make anything sound weird. Um, the limiter, I um, you know, it, it started out at at zero with the threshold. I just want I like the release. The release didn't didn't cause the um the track to pump or anything. So I went ahead and just, you know, pulled pulled back the threshold until I got it loud enough. Um, just doing this. See, I like to get I like to get my finished track, um, the RMS around around nine. So you'll see this this line that's bouncing around. Um, that's your average volume. That's your RMS. It's it's sitting around 12. So if you watch what I'm going to do right now, I just use my eyes to bring that to bring that bar up to negative nine. And you could hear there's, you know, there's a big difference in the overall volume when you go ahead and reduce it that much, but you'll see you don't have a lot of, um, you know, really any real uh, reduction happening on your on your limiter. And that's good because um, it makes it sound a lot more natural and your drums keep their punch. I could probably push it, you know, a little bit more. I mean, even though I could push it more and it's not distorting, it's really not adding anything to the sound. It's just making everything sound closer together and taking away the punch. So, um, you know, that's why I made those decisions. But um, yeah, I mean, Studio One is more than capable of getting you, you know, a track that, you know, fucking Drake would spit on, you know, an important, you know, an important track in the guy's career. You could totally make it on Studio One. No problem. You don't need anything else. So, um, you know, if you got Studio One uh, version three and you got my tie and you got the new presence, you know, um, don't go around you know, chasing a whole bunch of, you know, crack plugins that are going to, you know, it's going to wind up crashing your system or especially if you get Windows 10 and now they got the ability to, uh, you know, to see if you have unauthorized stuff on your system, you know, you wind up messing up a lot of stuff, you know, learn by tie, learn presence, learn sample one, go out and find good samples, 
um, you know, learn a little bit of synthesis and you'll be able to make, you know, whatever you want just as good. And then when you can actually go and buy a plug in, you're going to appreciate it that much more because you go and get a $250 synth. You're going to make sure that you learn it and you get your whole $250 instead of just using the 128 presets that come with it. So, um, yeah, that's it for this week. Um, you know, I look forward to seeing you guys interest in uh, studio one tutorials.com. It's going to be, you know, just crazy exclusive content. We're going to we're going to be able to go so much more in depth and we're going to be able to answer everybody's questions. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting that up and running. Um, we're going to we're going to keep, you know, the spirit of, you know, trying to help you guys out. And, you know, we're going to be the, you know, the lowest price tutorial site, you know, that's doing that's doing uh, hip hop and urban music. I promise you that. So this is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions at Studio1Tutorials.com. Keep it simple. Don't be basic. And we'll see you on the next one.